Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. Joining me is Professor G. Ramesh. He's no stranger to our channel. He has been on our channel many times. And we're going to be talking about the entry of intellectuals back into the field of politics. And we're going to be taking a look at a few examples, case studies, if you will, to see how they have succeeded or what kind of transformation they brought about. One such case is the current candidate to the Madurai constituency from the BJP party, Professor Brahma Srinivasan. So we're just going to deal with him at some length, but there are going to be other people also we're going to be talking about. Who better than another academic to talk about what happens when intellectuals come into the political ecosystem. Let's welcome Professor G. Ramesh. Professor Ramesh, Namaskar and welcome to P. Guru's channel. Thank you, thank you. It's always a pleasure to join you. And then, uh, you know, you are <clears throat> is actually intellectually stimulating, I would say, beyond the routine topics and themes and like that, you know. Thank you so much, sir. That Those kind yeah. words mean a lot to me. And, and our viewers, they're, they're all looking forward to listening to you. Many people are your students so across the world. There are students of yours. And uh, not just that. We, uh, we love That's to nice. listen to you, sir. So let's yeah. talk about, uh, just give us a little bit of a background about how Indian polity has been since the independence. So then we get a perspective of where things stand today. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we'll cover both the Indian perspective and, you know, our interests are Tamil Nadu at the end of the day. <laughs> okay. Yes. And because it needs some corrections, you know, that's why. And we will go there also. So since given the topic like intellectualism and like that, so if you when you started in 60s, 50s, 60s and like that, you know, I mean, we had ideologies, we had isms. And I mean, we had, of course, communists also, of course, <laughs> but then you know, we had the teams like Socialistic Partner Society and give credit to DMK. They also talked about social justice. Then there was the influence of communism and all, you know, and you had thought leaders like we had the second, I know, five year plans. Then Jawaharlal Nehru, who himself was a thought leader. And then we had, you know, Swatantra Party. I don't know if you remember. OK. Oh, yes, I, Mato, do. I do. Raja Minu Masani. Later, even people like liberal people, like, you know, uh, let's say Palkiwala, Nani Palkiwala, you know, they were all, I mean, provided intellectual stimulus to the debates. So, the, you know, debates will always have the tendency due to the you know, force of gravity to keep coming down. You know, and you need every time somebody to lift it up, okay, which is what Anomaly is also struggling in Tamil Nadu. You know, he, he keeps getting pulled down, even if he tries to raise the bar, okay. So this has been a singular mess if you look at the intellectual debate. But globally, also, if you see what's happening is that after the you know demise of USSR, there's no more any ideological battle to be fought. Okay. So it was all more like programs, plans, and then you know, schemes and things like that, or probably you know, certain like climate change was an agenda, you can say, not an ideology, but ideology from ideology they move to agendas, isn't it? I mean, even the U.S. government, you know, the presidential elections are fought on agendas. So there's no longer any ideology. But even at agenda level, the thought process is missing. The depth of the thought that goes into it is really missing, you know. So and Tamil Nadu is no exception. Tamil Nadu went actually hurtling down. I mean, as we discuss, I can bring you, you know, why it happened and how it happened and like that. You know? Yeah. So um, let's take a look at the current uh, contender from the BJP party in Madurai, Professor Raman Srinivasan, a dear yeah. friend of mine, I'm sure uh, you've uh, had interactions with him. And viewers, he has been on our channel. Professor Raman Srinivasan mm -hmm. has been on our channel and, and he's become extremely popular now, very busy. He's not only tending to his constituency, but he's also campaigning for fellow candidates in the southern part of Tamil Nadu. So a, a person who has really, really uh, changed the uh, outlook about how you know, communities come together. That has been my, in my opinion, he has worked tirelessly for this. So, sir, let us, I'm just going to state one line and it took years to get to that point. So maybe you can yeah. talk to us about what happened. Viewers, yeah. so, there are seven, yeah, go ahead, sir. You, if, you, if you have an idea, go ahead, sir. You know what? I know, I'm, when you finish your point, you, you're so saying. What, what I was, yeah, what I was trying to say was there were seven or eight communities. I don't even know the exact number who were all listed in scheduled caste. But what they wanted was they wanted to be all grouped together and they wanted to actually come out of the scheduled caste category. They said, no, we are not this. This is not 
who we are this is not how we look at ourselves and and there was a certain amount of you know who is better who is not how do we collectively call ourselves all these things somebody had to sit and explain to all these different groups and and bring them together under one roof and then a magical meeting happened a group of i think 100 of the community all put together they went to new delhi to meet the prime minister and it was all done by professor ram srinivasan and the line that that famous line you are devendra i am narendra that kind <laughs> of made them feel really good so sir now let's go back to what professor ram srinivasan has achieved this is not the only thing he has done he has done much more than this yeah. over to you sir yeah in fact it culminated in the meeting in madurai you know sir i think amisha ji came to madurai i think yes and he declared you know he made a statement there so the way i see you know i am a keen follower of uh, professor and in fact i like certain other speakers like for example prabhakaran you know and there is also a writer i mean he's very i know less appreciated but i really like him ma venkatesan for example he has written on ev ram sami naikar and other, those periods even to, in tukluk and all and the father of all these people let's say cho ram sami okay what they try to generate is actually a uh, thinking voters thinking citizen and thinking people at the, at the outset okay now the other thing i mean the way others try to do the way they approach is to make them really thoughtless you know give them some nice sc- slogans and the nice ideas but no thought process okay so but these people actually wanted that voters to think and then decide and then vote for them or really speak for them and like that which is actually a long shot that's why you said it really took so much time but the, even the example you said about devas and all the advantage is that it's very you know the whole merger happened without you know any rancor okay that happened because it, there was a huge consensus building okay but the basis to all this is that all the thought process that went into it and then the let's say the articulation that went behind that if when you articulate you also bring forth the entire history past you know and the analytical schema and then you tell them this is in your own interest you no know, and that really sold okay so he has got a long call i hope he wins because imagine people like that in parliament it really lift up the debate in the parliament you know so what we need is really uh, you know thinking voters and not thoughtless democracy and i hope his uh, winning will really ensure that we need people like that you know and it can be lawyer doctor professor academician so when we say intellectual i don't really mean that you know phd or something like that you know or you're a professor but we need somebody who can re- who really has got deep thoughts and then a thinking person who can really provoke thinking in others yeah sir so, um let's uh, yeah. take one step back and look at overall you know when the dmk was trying to establish itself as a political party they used to boast of so many intellectuals okay. and 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 viewers you'll be surprised to know how many of them are actually pseudo intellectuals or acquired professorships and what have you so i'd like yeah. to take you uh, urge you to go back to the time maybe in the uh, post independence because 1949 is when the dravida munnetra karanam party was formed by mr anadurai along with some 28 odd signatories and how many are still around i don't know but there is one name that was i think added at the very end and that is what is the face of dmk today that is mr karunanidhi sir take us back to those days how dmk grew and how they were you know projecting themselves as a party of intellectuals go ahead sir so this is again a sad part in the sense so when the dmk started okay it had it some intellectual inputs and then some thought process like social justice for example okay and then it had people like anadurai and then you know people like uh, ma ma po sivanyanam like that and they were the providing the intellectual fodder to the whole party on which they can build the edifices you know that's how it was really built but sadly what happened is there i mean that social justice manifested as anti brahmanism and anti brahmanism probably became like anti intellectual also again you know see i am not saying that brahmins are the repository of all wisdom and intellectual capabilities like that but i am saying somewhere they had developed an anatma for probably intellectual capabilities i don't know what is the reason it could be okay 
because they would otherwise produce thought leaders from all the communities, isn't it? I mean, all communities had thought leaders, like just now you gave the example of, you know, how he mobilized Professor Ram, you know, Ram Slinvas and like that. Okay. So one I see is that it started on a good intellectual note with Mapo Sivanyanam types, Saranadrai and things like that. But later what happened when Kalangar entered the scene, it became more through movie dialogues. So movie themes and dialogue became the ideologies. Okay. So people started believing that, you know, a hero can really eradicate poverty. He can bring social justice. And if only you attack the villains, who are the villains? The Brahmins. Okay. And then the whole thing will be really conquered and like that. Okay. And that fed them for 70 years. Hats off to them. They could, you know, maintain and sustain this, I mean, what I can say, agenda, not ideology or something, for 70 years, okay, uncontested. And then, it's, you know, I'm poor. now the, what I call the life cycle, then life cycle of that agenda is really coming down with the arrival of you know, Andamala and you know, Modi ji at the national level like that. So what I'm trying to say is that it started in some intellectual input, but then later it started, I mean, it manifested as an anti-intellectual, I don't know why, okay. And then it manifested as, let's say, movie dialogues and people were really communicating their ideologies, including M.G. Ramchandran, if you think of, through the movies, you know, yeah. You know, uh, you segued me into one point that I wanted to add. Viewers, yeah. how MGR became what he was, was primarily because of this, you know, this one man can solve all your problems in it. But he right. was, it was backed by some brilliant uh, writing in terms of lyrics for his movie songs and the right. music that, you know, M.S. Vishwanathan, others also, many music directors set music for him. But one of the gentlemen there, and I want to say this specifically because it has relevance to what we're talking about. One of the people that was uh, key in this success was a lyricist called Vali. His, his pen name is Vali. I think his real name is, I think, Srirangam Srinivasan. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, so there is also a Telugu. I think Rangarajan, I mean, Srirangam. Uh, Srirangam Rangarajan, okay. Huh. So, so he, he, he was an Ayanga, but he was a Muruga Bhakta. So he used to always wear, like, I am wearing Vibhuti. So oh. at the height of the DMK days, you know, the party of which MGR was a member, they were telling him, look, you need to tell Wali to not wear Vibhuti and, and not be pious in, in public functions. Oh, they were, okay. I mean, they were telling MGR, you go tell that guy, he should not be doing all these things. So MGR goes and says, you know, uh, Wali Bhai, can you, you know, uh, not uh, present right. your spirituality side to the people in public function and and he just thought for a moment and he said um, no i'm going to wear this vibhuti if you are going to drop me because of this it's your call and imme uh, immediately mgr hugged him <laughs> okay. mgr was not completely bought with this idea about you know hating god in fact not the dmk has a huge hypocrisy if you ask me professor ramesh they yeah. split from dk because they said dk doesn't believe in god that is uh, E.V. Evia. E.V. Ramsam and Aika doesn't believe in God. We do. That's why we are coming out. Because they couldn't say that, look, you have married somebody. That was the actual reason. <laughs> but they, so they initially they said, no, we, we are for God. And then look how this turned to common sense marriage and all that BS. Again, the hypocrisy here is they will be the first ones to consult four astrologers, five numerologists before they buy nomination papers. Nomination. Right. So let's get back to the main story. What I'm I wanted to say was this has been going on for a long time and, and the target, anybody in politics, if you want to succeed, you need a target. You need an enemy, enemy in double quotes. And this, unfortunately, was the Brahmin because that was from the Justice Party days. It's come from those days. Anyway, things are changing now. I hope, sir, over to you. But I think if you take both Kamraj and uh, MGR also, okay, now, they are not PhDs or graduates or something. I don't know about MGR also. But the point is that one, they listen to intellectuals. They would listen to people and like that, you know. And see, their thought process, it comes with their interest in the people. Okay. That took care of many of the, you know, the, I mean, what I can say, waywardness that could have happened otherwise. Okay. So that kept them focused. And so, I mean, their goals were very clear. Okay. 
so even in agenda without uh, without a keen interest the public interest it can go any way now let me tell you like you know why academicians matter or why intellectualism matter like intellectual incidentally i am really shy of using that word because that has become a bad name <laughs> okay <laughs> i mean it can be considered as arrogance i mean no and you know somebody will come and say who do you think you are like that okay that's the sort of thing and many times let me also tell you even in center even secretaries i have told me you know professor like you can do your research but we are only looking for the solutions okay so they think that solutions can come without research okay which is again an academic you can say okay <laughs> so you know what i used to do when i talk to government that is what in fact ramesh srinivasan and chon or maybe doing it you may do your studies you may know a lot but when you speak to people you dumb down your analysis and then you dumb down your articulation okay then only really appeals do you think ram srinivasan can present himself as an intellectual when he's going and asking for votes you know it will not sell at all <laughs> you know but he has a way of articulating and narrating that's why and his tamil is beautiful and it flows like anything i really envy him is you know the sort of public communication style and i wish i have that also <laughs> you know so i that really go <laughs> so why do you need academician still is that you still need a perspective you need to know the history you know you need to know the i mean the sort of the background from where you have come from you know and sort of you need to have an analysis what may be the consequences what may be the fallout and all that what you call as in us and other country they do policy analysis for an example i'm telling you you know so that is missing now i mean i leave out ideology even to take a decision how what thought process goes into it that itself many times is a suspect okay i'm saying both at state level and national level for example i'll give you one you know one reference suppose if i want to talk on social justice i feel that the idea of social justice the way it was defined has outlived its life okay and you need to define it in a different way and what will be that because the basic aspirations have been met of the people okay the so what will be the next level of aspiration and how do you go about doing that and they are not worried about god i mean anti being atheist or being you know anti brahmanical like that they are interested in themselves they want to become you know something and how can the government ensure that and include in, you know ensure the equality now i want to really develop a stream of thoughts in this literature but who are the people who with whom you can really engage today okay that's a sort of lacuna and gap that you have when you say that you know there is really bereft of any thought pro i mean i would say thought leaders like that maybe organizations can like rss can provide you know the ideologues you need today you know who can really provide the basis and like that i'll stop with one point then you can ask your question in monetary economics i'm an economist you no know, so we always say in monetary econ economics we say that it started with the principle money does matter then it became that money does not matter third it be money only matters so for the dravidian part is money only matter i think that the monetary economist economist to the core okay money only matter now what's the problem with money only matters intellectualism suffers like anything even as an in, you know as a you know you are a, um, a thought leader and think like that if somebody is going to incentivize you to speak you know that's really going against your grain isn't it so that is something which has really killed many of the intellectual process that otherwise were happening like you know in the earlier days if you look at you know raja ji raja ji or minu masani or walki wala and also of course nehru and you know other example that i gave you know <clears throat> yeah thank you sir uh, mm. the, uh, let, let's take a one step back and now yeah. we are seeing that mm. dmk is facing a lot of headwind right? not just dmk the india alliance the the wrath of the voter is becoming you know very very high uh, the, the, yesterday in uh, karur constituency the congress candidate jodi mani who has not appeared there very controversial in, in fact even the local dmk wants her to lose it's that bad the anti incumbency there mm. was a situation where in the night a lady jumped right in front of the moving car and the guy had to apply okay. sudden brake the reason yeah, that happened was because they were trying to get away from people not answer question and and they just so the car stopped and then they shred her with questions this is like mm -hmm. third or fourth meeting not just her mk stalin is having problem 
So the CM himself is having problems and he's unable to explain what he has done for the people. Uh, see, one in interesting thing, Professor Ramesh, is yeah. even though the floods happened four months ago and, and water, you know, the cyclone and things like that, Chennai people are this time really, really angry that not one person came to even show help. Only BJP was doing it. Annamalai was there. Vinoj, the person who's contesting from central Chennai, he was very prominent in this. Many other people from the BJP, yes. they've actually gone, gone packet distribution, water distribution. You know, you know, there, there's a famous saying that Oscar Wilde wrote, you know, whenever there is flood, water, water everywhere, water, right. water not a drop to spare. Because, yeah. you know, whenever you have water, rainwater, it's also full of cholera. You, can, right. you can't just drink the rainwater that is going around. It's, it's so contaminated. So, so this, this, this voter is having a extreme anger towards DMK. What do you think is going to happen? Is this swinging the needle towards BJP or ADMK? What do you think is happening in Tamil Nadu today? There is a severe anti-incumbency. And I've been writing and speaking in Tamil media, media, you know, media that if Annamalai has to channelize his anti-incumbency, okay, he has to speak 19, sorry, 2026 election along with 2024 election. Okay. If you push only 24 election for the people of Tamil Nadu, center is still distance away. Okay. But they want change in Tamil Nadu. And he has to say that if you need double engine in 2026, you need first of all BJP, you know, aligned party here. Okay. And I think I think somewhere you have to channelize that into Modi plus Anamalai. Okay, so that's something I hope they will take care in their analysis because you know they think that center cannot fix these things. So the belief, because though DMK tries to put the problems on center, people may believe that no, no, this is my street problem, this is my lighting problem, this is my water problem, and I mean, state government has to fix it. Okay. So I, I hope they can really channelize his anti-incumbency into vote for BJP and its you know NDA partners and like that. But I'll tell you one basic undercurrent which I'm really happy happening in 2024. You know, see what a lot of changes that I happen you expect to happen in 2026 is really happening in 2024 itself. For example, Dravidianism versus Desium and then you know Devigam and all that. Okay, that's already getting pitched this time itself. 26 metro, it will be very strong. Okay. What is happening is that the belief of the politicians across parties is that people will forget. There is a shelf life to all the, you know, happenings. And even if, why do they give freebie one month before? Because if you give two months before, also people forget. Okay. If you give cash one month before, people forget. You have to give it in the nick of the time. Okay. So that's the sort of shelf life they believe. But for once, people are coming around, coming back and asking, you promised this, this is your manifesto, and we suffered. What's your solution for that? You know, and what did you do for that? Where were you? You know. So all these things were never happening in the in the earlier days because people will be you, know, you look at the brave lady in the crowd of a DMK group to really be an individual lady and then go and ask a question to her, you know, is really requires tremendous courage. And she that means I she represents thousands of people. It's not that she is expressing her anguish. I take her as a sample for thousands of people who want to, who have the same sentiment, but probably are afraid of coming out or probably are even reluctant to express, isn't it? So this is a beautiful thing that's happening. And if it doesn't happen on 26, it will definitely happen. OK, it, if I mean, can they channelize it in 24? That depends on the, you know, the what I would say the cap capacity of anomaly to really channelize it into votes, you know. Yeah. Also, you know, DMK is still playing politics here. Viewers, right. you know, now everybody has gotten used to the money being automatically transferred into your Jandan Yojana account. Everybody is now used to that because of, you know, like, for example, if you are buying a gas cylinder and you are getting a subsidy, you pay full price. But as soon as it gets registered, the subsidy hits your bank account. And people know SMS it comes. Okay, this money has been created. But they have gotten used to it. Now, this thousand rupee business that DMK has started, first of all, it said for all household women, women house, women of the household, something like that, you'll get that. Then they said they added who qualified. 
And then that qualification was saying, I think you have to have a ration card. I mean, basically what it means is only one in five, maybe, is getting the money. Not everybody is getting the money because they don't have the money to get. Now, yeah. what has happened is that even this 1,000 rupees that they are giving looks like it is not coming directly to your bank account. They're doing something else that they're, they're trying to tell you in a different way. And then, then when people ask why, Jandan Yojana is giving us straight to our bank account. Simple. Why are you making this complicated? So there is, they are trying to explain, oh, well, you know, in case you do this, in case you forget your bank account, in case you lose your mobile, but you have to have your ration card. So people are going through and, you know, rebutting there also. What is happening is they essentially have lost the plot. Also, Professor Ramesh, one other thing I want to ask you. Did you notice that Stalin is not welcome outside of uh, Tamil Nadu for campaigning for Indy candidates? And oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, normally is going I, to campaign. Yeah. yeah. Because normally, see, they will have some appeal in some part of Karnataka, some part of Andhra, some part of Delhi, and okay. Delhi and like that. Pockets. Okay. But I don't think even for that he's getting called. But now you see Annamalai he is in great demand in those places. And they'll be really called. I mean, you know. But what was the previous point you said? I mean. No, the previous point I was trying to say was why the DMK uh, is not even paying the thousand rupees directly to the bank account. Instead, looks like they're taking a cut before they give the money. I'm suspecting right. this. I'm not what, sure. Why people are asking, this is in nature of the people. Okay. Once you see a better system happening, why will people go back to a bad system? Once you go by, let's say, one day Bharat, people will expect one day Bharat of all even unreserved compartments, isn't it? You all along you are saying that no, no, this is the only thing possible, this is the only thing possible. But no, I'm showing showing you a possibility. Modi has shown you a possibility. You know, there's one saying, see, it says that mind once expanded will not contract. People's yes. mind yes. expanded. But the leader's mind are still at the social justice level of 1940. Okay, this is what I'm saying, social justice. They want ordinary compartments also to look like that. You know, they want even Janta train also to look like that. Okay, similarly, here also people are asking, no, I never had any problem with cash transfers. With You know, it goes like one bullet, bullet payment from Delhi to the last beneficiary. Okay, but these people are, I mean, look at the fictitious argument that people are bringing it up. Okay, here they are saying that, you know, if you put it in bank account, and you know if you keep drawing and you don't keep minimum balance then now they are charging you rate i mean some service charges and things like that there is no service charge for the jandan account okay that is again a misnomer they have been trying to spread so it's not at all that but idea of modi is not that he will give thousand rupees and people will spend it his idea is that people will start saving okay people are to get into the you know banking habits so that they get a taste of it again once you get a taste of something like what we say once you have tasted blood here you can say once you have tasted this your own self-esteem goes up and then you want to have you know security and then you want to have savings and like that so counterproductive many of these policies are so counterproductive outdated i would say but still i don't know the social justice guys are still holding on to this you know, 1940 thoughts, I think, when none of these existed, there were no, you know, technology, there were no banks, and then they are still, why? Because they want to go and give it with, you know, maybe their own photos and things like that, you know. So it's going to ridiculous levels. This is going to ridiculous level. I hope, I mean, people ask him, I mean, this is the time to ask, because after that, they won't come to your constituency, isn't it? So I appeal to the citizens, uh, please keep asking, please keep asking. And this is the time the you know politicians will behave also because they cannot misbehave in a political part, political meeting. Okay, that will become viral. So this is the time to really ask them, just be you know courageous and then go and ask like that lady, you know. And I see that lady as actually probably you can say, I hope something like that becomes like a jasmine moment, you know, see, <laughs> you know. Yes, yes, yes. Very true, very true. So, um, uh, viewers, uh, we are going to take some questions now, sir, if yeah, you don't mind. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, Anna Malay has just made a statement. We want to, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. We want to remind TN Sim, Sim Stalin that 511 poll promises he gave in 2021 remain unfulfilled. And he first attends to those before making further promises after sensing defeat. 
The electoral stunts of DMK cannot deceive the youth and the sports enthusiasts in Coimbatore as they have given in, they have become they have grown increasingly vigilant. DMK is a party that couldn't construct a new bus terminus in Coimbatore in the last three years. It is today promising a stadium that should be regarded as the joke of the year and deserves slow clapping from the <laughs> people of Coimbatore. He is really taking it up one notch. Um, Professor Ramesh, how yeah. do you see the overall campaign going? He's also campaigning in other places. One thing that they are missing out, in my opinion, sir, they yeah. are not saying, when these people say they're giving you 1,000 rupees a month, why, they yeah. are, why, why are they not saying for every farmer, we are giving 500 rupees a month across the belt for everybody? And we've been doing it for three years consistently, number right. one. Right. Number two, yeah. for 80 crore people, we are still giving you free groceries. Now they've also got reduced price, price Bharat rice outlet. It, it's reduced price. Rice is also at a reduced price. So all right. these things, I don't see that thing being uh, portrayed by BJP. Do you know yeah. what so is the, the problem? So the item that you read out, message, I really appreciate him because he keeps on bringing the issue back to the state level. Okay. Yes. And then he, then he puts them on the defense. Okay. He's really like Yarker. Just he's aiming at the toes, basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, toes yeah, of the yeah. CM. Okay. So he just can't. He's, he's actually what paralyzed there. I mean, he can't leave the crease it's like that. Okay. So that's yeah, why I really yeah. appreciate. And um, so, I mean, if you look at the campaign, yeah, it's really beautiful. I mean, the way they are doing it like that. And as I say, I mean, some things here, yeah, I mean, it's too short now. Sadly for them, this is the first election to happen, I think, Tamil Nadu, the earliest elections to happen. And uh, so probably they couldn't firm up, but Anamalai started campaigning for this election probably six months back, unlike other parties. Okay. Only mistake BJP did it, which I, if they had taken the decision earlier, Anamalai would have gone aggressively. I mean, if they had really decided about ADMK sometime back, that would have given him a long advantage on Amla. You know, constituencies could have been decided, alliances could have been decided much earlier and like that. But otherwise, I mean, I think they have been able to communicate. But if you take your point that they are giving 1,000 rupees and we have been giving for the last three years, you know, I mean, Anamali is doing tremendous effort to communicate all that. People know it, but why you and me, we don't know, and generally outside Tamil Nadu people don't know is that Tamil media doesn't speak about that. Okay. Yes, yes. So if Tamil media, I tell you, if tomorrow if there's an earthquake, let's say, in Tamil Nadu, I'm telling you see, seriously, okay, tomorrow if there's an earthquake in Tamil Nadu, I don't wish that, I'm saying, for example, if media doesn't cover it, people will think there is no earthquake in Tamil Nadu, Outsiders also will think that nothing happened in Tamil Nadu. That's the status of Tamil Nadu, thanks to the Tamil media, you know, the media and channel that exists there. There are a few channels which bring it out. And of course, you also use, of course, you will dig it out. That's a different thing. Okay. And one good thing is there are no time, time zone. You'll even wake up in the night and start it if there's something. But what I'm trying to say is that we think that if they, since they don't project, they don't debate, people don't know. But people know. It's just that the reporters don't know. And then the you know the promo promoters or the channels don't know that's all, and they will start seeing the election results. You know, I'm looking for some surprises. I hope really it happens. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Uh, now let's take a quick look at some questions. Yeah. Uh, Nandini Ashok Patno, CIA just does not sleep. <laughs> no, no, no. I do sleep. I do sleep. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, it, this is this is a passion. Once you think of something as your passion mm. and not as a job, then mm. time gets created. But thank you for your concern. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Raja Raman, uh, by the way, one question, one thing I do have to tell viewers. Mm. For a 30-minute mm. hangout, we have to prepare for one hour to two hours. There's a lot yeah. going on in the background. Mm. You don't want to be covering something somebody else has already covered in depth. Which means you have to listen sure. to the other person and you can't shortcut sure. through an in-depth discussion because the, the details are in the discussion itself so there's a lot that goes into it but again like i said if you like what you're doing time is not a constraint yeah somebody asked Next gold one. and all that yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, raja raman wants to know would money gold coin and liquor not turn the minds of voter towards dmk it might turn because what's happening is that uh, i mean 
I heard that distributions are happening. I don't know what the election commission is you not know, doing. In fact, you know, I've been uh, my car has been searched thrice, twice in Bang Bangalore and once in Chennai. I asked the police guy, how do you know that my car doesn't have money? <laughs> okay. So I've been wherever I go, they get say, I don't know how they spot cars which doesn't carry money. You know, otherwise, how can so much distribution can keep happening? But what I'm hoping is that I mean, I think people have to wake up. And I, some people were giving me some calculations, like, you know, if there's a constituency of 20 lakh, let's say you chose to give for 1 lakh or 2 lakh, obviously not all 20 lakhs are going to get, then it'll be like, you know, you will need a five-year plan for that, okay, government budget. So what happens is that, that 1 or 2 lakhs is probably twisting out the, you know, election result of other 10 lakhs who are voting. They're doing a disservice to others who are doing a honest job, you know, coming and voting without taking payments and like that. And they are ruining their own I mean, future also. But this menace is there. And, and, uh, and only when this is curbed, you really know what is the true voting share of each of these parties. Okay, Until then, you don't know really these votes because, I mean, there are no committed voters. Another thing is that post-2000, what I expect is that these people don't carry the ideological baggage of people born before 1980. Okay, Before 1980, they have gone through that. They will remember. They might have, went, you know, they were attended meetings and all. Post 1980, then post 2000, they don't have any ideological baggage of DMK or ADMK or any of these. So they are all easily, I mean, they are floaty. Okay, they are all easily convertible. So that is why, like Professor, again, let's go back to the topic, like Professor Ramasreen was. In fact, this will be an interesting point I want to make. Professor Ramasreen was a type. What they try to do is that. Rather than declaring this is my constituency, they create a constituency for themselves. Okay, they create a constituency of people who are aligned to their thinking, and they try to develop their thinking voters and thinking people who think independently. Ram Srinivasan is confident of winning people who think independently, but others don't want even think, and now definitely not independently. You know that the dravda karagams, you know. Very true, sir. Very true. So, um, the tomorrow we are going to have a hangout with Sri Rajagopalan viewers at 10 a.m. Oh. Monday morning. We're going to be talking about some constituencies that are under the radar of the ECI in Tamil Nadu. And, and these may be postponed. So, we are going to talk about that. So, stay tuned. Um, thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, can, yeah. Thank you, Muthu Kumar Kanakachalam, for your super sticker. Um, anything else? Yeah, Facts and Fictions wants to know, can BJP reach a last-minute approach to the voters in TN because both Dravidian parties do polling day what they can to get votes? Yeah, you know, see, all of us think like uh, even Annamalai once said, I think, like exam students. You think that it's last 48 minutes, 48 hours preparation which really make you graduate, undergraduate, IAS and all that, okay. One, of course, you prepare for last six months, one year and like that. Last two, but the last two days can swing probably 5% vote. I don't know, 3% vote, you know. And in fact, if the voting percentage goes goes higher, you know, this time, I would say that it should be in favor of BJP. Okay. And I would say that, I mean, the I keep telling BJP people also, you know, I used to start saying that you just get, make people to vote. They'll vote for you. Don't worry. You don't have a canvas for yourself because they have seen what's happening, you know, both in rest of India and in Tamil Nadu. Okay. So the, you have to just get them, and then I'm sure BJP has got a good chance. And good luck to our own Professor Ram Srinivasan also. <laughs> you know? We need people like him in the parliament. From south, there are people in the parliament I want from Tamil Nadu. <laughs> you know? Not, you know, what happens? You elect them with all the difficulty, OK? And parliament opens, they walk out. What is the big deal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the big deal, CIA? Yeah, yeah. OK. Right, right. <laughs> Right? Can I do it in my class? I go to a class, give me attendance and walk out. Do it in my <laughs> class, which of a principal will allow that? <laughs> you know, I'll be dismissed from my college if I do that. I won't be allowed to take the exam. I mean, they just come merrily and then, you know, walk out and then go out. That's what is happening. <laughs> and he worked out once in five years. My God, I mean, I'm, I'm, it just amazes me and zaps me. See, you know? Um, Chitra wants to know, Professor Namaskaram, why isn't Shankara TV? I think you meant Tamarai TV. Shankara TV is more uh, uh, 
theological channel and similar channels have a political wing to voice the good programs of the center so see see i appreciate you somewhere i don't know how you found me these channels how to found new new names start promoting them cultivating them because there are a lot of you know wisdom available outside what the national media keep calling and like that you know and uh, so you will find new fresh thinking and fresh ideas and like that that's the way i look at you that's why you have been doing it like that you know and that's what even these channels have to do they just call somebody whom they know and then you know, locally available then you don't get any fresh perspectives at all <clears throat> yeah. next one please r srinivasan wants to know though sri rama srinivasan was the voice of bjp why couldn't he be given a comfortable place yeah no what is a comfortable place i mean you know i mean it's really uh, <clears throat> what they meant was probably you were angling for some and then you got something else or like that you know so these are the realms of politics but there is one thing we should understand if you are a part of a national party okay so these are all decided with various consideration regional parties have got lesser considerations than national parties isn't it so obviously i mean i was also feeling bad some people declared why oh, open my election office this is my constituency and all that okay and if you ask modi he will tell you sir where will you contest he'll say no no my party will decide and here you have people in tamil nadu who say that this is my constituency okay and my advice to all these people who are really you know wanting to really become something please develop your constituency cho had his own constituency isn't it i mean he was yes, not yes. not for winning election you are developing your constituency who want to know you know whom you are bringing and what is the thoughts isn't it so yes. that's the that's the way they have to look at it yeah uh, next question please uh, raja raman again uh, would illegal migrants like rohingyas make a swing in the voting how to identify before caa there is uh, this is something i don't know see what happens is that there are a lot of migrants in karnataka So bangalore chennai and all both in migrants in karnat bangalore for example they could be from chennai kerala bangalore similarly in chennai also on voting day they go back to their places okay the guys who should be really voting whereas these illegal immigrants they have ration cards voting and all that and they feel obliged and dedicated to vote because their survival depends on that you know so this is something counter productive this is something the election commission police and all have to come down heavily but this is where the booth agents you know and then the people like that can really ident- help identify and then i am out especially the local parties and all you know in a smaller place like tirupur salem and all they can be easily identify see in Ch- in bangalore they can just merge easily is it is but in salem and all i mean and with, with heavy tamil language there how do these people manage i don't know yeah they should they should do some simple test you know uh, you ask a question and out. see if the guy answers or not weeding out has to happen no they will pretend yeah. to be see any indian can vote anywhere if he has got a voting card that's not the point but you can make out i mean even what language they speak and then uh, you know right, right. they are really truly indian like that yeah next one please Uh, Nandini Ashok wants to know what do you think of the influence of Sri Guru Murthy? Is he mentoring Annamalai? I mean, Guru Murthy again is a classic example. My apology, I left out. He is again a thought leader. I really see him as a thought leader and ideologue and like that. But you know, my I am really speaking from more from the perspectives of you know why do you need intellectual and why do we need intellectuals in politics and like that? You know. I, this is not about really who is ad- mentoring whom and then who is advising whom and like that you know but i would say that anamalai given his personality i mean even if he was consulting not consulting talk you know but he'll be getting taking inspirations from all you know that's why i, re- I mean that's why i see him developing himself I mean, you know i am very sure he'll be taking inspirations and suggestions from all yeah next one please uh, thank you so much raja raman ji for your super sticker and that brings us to a close of what i would say is a very enriching session professor ramesh and thank you so much for agreeing to come at such short notice viewers the scheduled programming of uh, sri kumar kannam will be on tuesday at 10 am so um, professor ramesh thank you so much sir thank you. we'll be back again
you know, I started noting down. I mean, maybe I might write a small article on this. I think what we discussed today. <laughs> sir, I'll be happy to publish it on P Guru, sir. Platform oh, is available for you. Yes. I'll do that. I'll do that. Hmm? Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you so much. Look forward. I see. We are waiting for recording. Thank you.